And now, for our feature presentation, <laughs> we have Reverend John Scott, the epitome of sartorial elegance. Oh. <laughs> Him look goody. And when he opens his mouth to speak, that sonorous voice just draws you in. <laughs> and apart from that, he always has an uplifting, enlightening, inspiring message. So please, help me welcome Reverend John. Thank you, Carol, and good morning, family. Uh, joy to add my own words of welcome. And to those who join us in consciousness by listening to our messages on the World Wide Web. Today's encouragement is inspired by a little boy named Gabriel. Gabriel, who was mentally challenged, had a hard time learning to write his name. He could spell it, but for the life of him, he just couldn't get all the letters down on paper. He got the G perfectly. Then came the A. He painstakingly made the circle part of the A, and it was perfect. But he always forgot the little foot with the, you know, the little hook. And then the big challenge was the B. He would sit there thinking and thinking and to himself, should I put the bat before the ball or should I put the ball before the bat? Invariably, he put the ball before the bat. In other words, the circle before the long stroke. Then tiring of the activity, little Gabriel would put a big dot for emphasis and move on to other pursuits. His attempts to write his name looked like this. Can you see? Yeah. God, period. It may not be a coincidence, friends, that this child is named Gabriel because his childlike attempts to write his own name, in my view, contain a very powerful message for us when we ourselves are faced with challenges. Too often, we rush around, don't we, looking for solutions which would effortlessly present themselves if we would only let go and trust God, period. And so this morning, I want us to think about how we can just trust God, period. There's an ancient Hindu legend which tells of a time when all humans were gods. But they so abused their divinity that Brahma, the god of gods, decided to take it away from them and hide it where they would never again find it. So they had a council of the gods, according to the legend. And one, one god said, let us bury it deep within the earth. But Brahma said, no, man will search and dig and dig and dig till he found it. Another god said, OK, let's hide it at the top of the very highest mountain. And Rama thought for a while and said, no, man will climb and his spirit to ever seek and to conquer will eventually take him to the very top of the highest mountain and he will find his divinity. So a bright young God said, well, let's take it to the very depths of the sea. And again, Brahma said, no, man will dive down into the very depths. He will invent ways to get to the seabed and he will find it. And then Brahma said, here is what we'll do. We'll hide man's divinity deep down in humans themselves. They will never think to look for it there. Ever since then, the legend concludes, man has been going up and down the earth, climbing, digging, diving, exploring, searching for something that is already within him and within every human being. And then friends, 2,000 years ago, a man named Jesus found it and began sharing its secret, telling everyone that, he, that would listen that the kingdom of heaven is neither low here nor low there, 
for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's right where we are. Last weekend, a group of us went on retreat to explore and contemplate this truth that we come fully equipped and that we are enough. And I want to thank those of you who weren't on the retreat with us, but who attended the Sunday celebration here at the temple in Kingston and held the high watch for all of us while we did the same for all of you in beautiful Ocho Reyes. And I have asked Sonita Abrams, who was one of the retreaters, um, to share a little of the experience of the retreat with you. Sonita? Morning, love. I thought maybe we had forgotten. No? <laughs> Morning, everybody. Morning, Morning, my spiritual family. Well, the universe had a different plan for me because I was unfortunately not going to be able to attend because I was supposed to be in Rio de Janeiro on a work trip. But then the special gift of the Chikvi visited me the week before. And so I wasn't able to go to Brazil, but I was able to go on the retreat. <laughs> what was so special about this retreat? Because we do this every year, but I think that everybody will agree that this perhaps was the most special one of all. First of all, the venue was perfect. Cannon Villas is absolutely beautiful. It's one of the nicest beaches, I think, on the island. And the actual villas are lovely, close together. The organization of the event was perfect. Reverend Anne and Janet and Pauline did a superb job. <laughs> the group that attended, I think there were perhaps 21 or 22 of us, um, was just divinely appointed. We miss the rest of you, but I have to say that everybody that was supposed to be there was there this year. Uh, the food was fantastic. I think we all came back to Kingston a couple of pounds heavier. I want to say that Reverend John, you know, the, the sessions that he prepared were very powerful, very inspiring, and that all of us were able to dig deep and learn some things from it. There was a presentation on I am that I am. And we had to form groups and perform what this meant for us. Of course, my group did win, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, but it was a very, very um, powerful, made us think a lot about the meaning of, of what I am that I am is really about. We had our service on the beach in the gazebo on the Sunday, and Reverend John did something on a family album. He made us close our eyes and go back to that time in our lives that was very um, meaningful. I know I, for one, had a huge breakthrough uh, during that exercise, and the prayer afterwards, called the Chamber of Prayer, where everybody prayed out aloud was also very, very powerful. So I want to end by saying that next year we're going back to Cannon Villas. It's going to be this booked already. It's the last weekend in October. And uh, hopefully it'll be two nights rather than one. And hopefully many more of you will join us. Because even though we come here on a Sunday and we come to classes, being together for a whole weekend with our spiritual family is a very, very special and meaningful event. And I know that I'll never take this spiritual family for granted. I've been in this church for many, many years, and I hold very dear this family because we really are a family. And I hope to see many of you with us on this wonderful trip next year. Thank you. And now a word from our sponsor. <laughs> Thank you, Sanita. <laughs> yes, we have booked it for next year already. So start putting aside a, li a little something every week or a month towards that and give yourself the gift of retreating. For me, our retreats and other spiritual practices are really an opportunity to stop the mad rush of human doing to become again the human being that I was meant and was created to be. Rabbi Harold S. Kushner, the author of a book titled Why Bad Things Happen to Good People, 
tells the story of a group of tourists on safari in Africa. They had hired several native porters to carry their supplies while they trekked. And well, after three days, the porters told the visitors that they would have to stop and rest for a day. It was not that they were tired, they explained, but, and I quote, we have walked too far, too fast, and now we must wait for our souls to catch up with us, unquote. And how many of us really hit the floor running every day and walk and run too fast and too long and perhaps never give us ourselves a chance for our souls to catch up with us? The writers of the Bible, my friends, regarded this pause that refreshes as so important that in the Ten Commandments, it prescribes the Sabbath as a day of rest. Some people take this commandment so seriously that they literally will not lift a finger on their Sabbath. But when Jesus was taken to task for allowing his disciples to pick fruit and eat on the Sabbath, he clearly stated, and I quote, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath, unquote. So for me, he was saying that the Sabbath was given to us as an opportunity to restore our souls. It was never intended to be a penalty or a punishment. So in the very first book of the Bible, the writer of Exodus, Exodus 31 verse 13 says that God himself rested on the seventh day and was refreshed. In Hebrew, the verbs referring to God's resting is Shavat. Uh, Louise is here, am I pronouncing it correctly? <laughs> Thank you. Um, which means literally, he stopped. Shavat, he stopped. From which, of course, we get the word Sabbath. And Yiddafash, which literally translates as he got his soul back. So he stopped and got his soul back. Now, friends, if you think of it for a moment, you will agree that the all-powerful, omnipotent, omnipotent God does not need to rest. Indeed, there is not a shred of evidence that there was, as has ever been, a moment cessation in the ceaseless activity and evolution of the universe. So the story is meant not to be taken literally, but to signify that the Sabbath is a state of mind. It is a state of mind that we enter when we go into the silence of our own souls, or as Jesus puts it, when we enter our closet and shut the door. This is where we find the still waters, and this is where we experience rest, refreshment, and peace. This is where we encounter the I am that we are and find that God is truly all there is, period. Without regular periods of replenishment, one soon suffers from serious burnout. Someone shared with me recently that she had been so busy providing the perfect home, being the perfect wife, the perfect mother, and the perfect professional, that she was experiencing a sense of alienation from God. And when I asked her to tell me a little about her spiritual practice, she said, and I quote, that part of my life is perfectly barren, unquote. I was minded of the prophet Jeremiah's comparison between a person who is bereft of God and a tree planted in the desert, which will ultimately wither and die because it has no source of replenishment from which to draw. But Jeremiah assures us, and I quote, he who trusts the Lord shall be like a tree planted by waters. Its leaves are ever fresh. It has no care in a year of drought, and it does not cease to bear fruit. Unquote. Jeremiah 17, verses 7 and 8. Let us affirm together, I am like a tree planted by the waters of truth. Together. I am like a tree planted by the waters of truth. I am firmly rooted in God, period. I am firmly rooted in God, period. 
My friends, you know, when we are emotionally drained and physically tired, the restoration can only come from source. And this is when we, we know that we need to have our roots deep down into something that is secure and sure and certain. God, period. We need to stop and allow this indwelling presence to lead us beside the still waters and to restore our very souls. Sometimes spirit shows up in the form of a friend or a loved one who invites us out or just phones and email or emails to say, I'm thinking of you. We are trying to do more of that in our spiritual community with our Church Without Borders program, which seeks to have us reach out to each other in ways that express our genuine caring for each other and for the people in our community beyond our walls. And so this brings me to your assignment. Regulars at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living know that I always give an assignment. So this is a two-part assignment for you. First of all, give yourself a Sabbath this week. Set aside a specific time for just being quiet and for doing what you want. It doesn't have to be an entire day, but I suggest you give yourself at least half a day and use it any way you choose. This very afternoon may be a good time, or if you prefer, when I was typing, I forgot one of the O's and it, it, re it reads, this idea may be a God time, period. <laughs> for which to undertake this Sabbath. Your Sabbath can be any day that you choose, any time you choose. Because remember, it's a state of mind, a, a time when you withdraw from the human doing to become a human being, being one with God, period. Use this time to think about God and to feel about feel the presence and power within you. And your Sabbath doesn't need to be a holier than thou sacred time where you know angels are playing violins and harps and all of that. Your Sabbath can be, you can be washing the dishes. Sometimes on my day off on a Wednesday, I, I may decide to clean all my shoes or clean out a cupboard or just needlepoint for the entire day and I make every stitch an affirmation. You know, I am that I am. I am that I am. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be anything heavy. It can be light. It can be joyous. It can be listening to your favorite music. It can be writing a note to a friend who you've been meaning to, to say, I love you and thank you and appreciate you. But set aside a time for restoring your soul. And then, friends, the second part of your assignment is to reach out to someone in your spiritual community this week. Begin today after our celebration, if you happen to be here present at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living in beautiful Jamaica. But wherever you are in the world, reach out to someone who, with whom you share a special connection. And if you are here at the temple, Right after service this morning, look for someone who you have, you have hardly spoken to or seldom spoken to and just share with them uh, perhaps your reaction to my wonderful message <laughs> um, or just your name and, and just reach out. This is what spiritual community is all about. For you see, friends, if you're really interested, you could also become a part of our our. Um, Church Without Borders, if you're interested in that form of our Love in Action ministry, talk to Reverend Anne Shand or any of our practitioners after the service. There are many um, temple members and temple regulars who would appreciate a phone call or a visit if they have not been able to come out to church for a while. So talk to Reverend Anne and join that ministry of the Church Without Borders. Because human souls, all of us, are restored by relationships and the warmth ex and express caring that we find in our spiritual community. These are the still waters that can really restore our soul. In Hebrew, the term for still waters is ma'i menuhot, 
meaning waters of rest and relaxation. And my prayer for each of you is that the God presence within you will ever lead you beside these still waters, bringing you rest and refreshment and replenishment and the restoration of your resolve to live in close contact with God, period. In this consciousness, you are indeed like a tree planted by the still waters of truth, which continually restore your soul. May you remain firmly rooted in principle so that the fruit that you bear will glorify God, period. Namaste.